With me today for the Donut Show are three students from the Culinary Institute of America. Matt, welcome. Thank you. Vedika, it's very nice to have you here. Thank and you. Uh, Alex, we'll be talking through the show. Just ask me any questions. I'll try to answer them. Okay. All right. So for our first donut, we're going to do raspberry filled yeast raised donuts. These are very delicious, and my mom would make these on Fridays for um, a special treat. The raspberry filled donuts reminded her of uh, the Polish donuts of her youth. You can fill these donuts not only with raspberry jam, but uh, cherry jam, uh, strawberry jam, blueberry jam, and cream filled donuts too. So first, uh, for yeast donuts, we have two tablespoons of yeast. We have a half a cup of warm water. Yeast should be proofed in water that's anywhere from 110 to 115 degrees. No hotter, you don't want to kill the yeast. And one teaspoon of sugar. Now the reason we're using yeast is it adds a volume, it adds a, a, a fluffiness to the dough. And uh, what yeast does uh, generally is turn the sugars and the starch of the flour into alcohol and carbon dioxide and gets those bubbles going in the dough. And especially for filled donuts, you want a lot of big air pockets. Uh, in a bowl, two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. I always use, for general baking, unbleached flour. So two and a half cups. Two teaspoons of all-purpose kosher salt and a quarter of a cup of sugar. Mix this together. I'm going to add also some nutmeg. I love the flavor of nutmeg in jelly donuts. Now, this is a nutmeg. What do you think the outside coating is? Anybody know? That's mace. Nutmeg is the only spice that actually grows with another spice encasing it, and that is the mace. And you peel this off. It's a kind of a filament coating on the nutmeg itself. This can be ground up very nicely in a mortar and pestle or in a small uh, food processor into a fine, fine powder, and that's mace. But then this has to be broken, uh, and I don't know if I can break it here on my counter. Oops, I can. <laughs> I hit it a little bit too <laughs> <laughs> And here is the nutmeg itself. Isn't that yeah. nice? Mm -hmm. too? And when I travel, I always look for uh, unusual spices, local spices. I got these nutmegs in the grenadines. So we are going to do a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. So now for the dough itself, we've added all the dry ingredients. Make a little well in the center and uh, add two large eggs in your well. A little bit like making pasta dough. Mm -hmm. But this is very different. Two eggs, a little bit of butter, just two tablespoons. And this is very, see how soft it is? You want it really soft. So add that into the well also. And look what's happened to our yeast. It is really proofed, fluffy, beautiful, all dissolved. It's a really excellent, excellent uh, reaction. And so this gets whisked in incorporating all the dry ingredients. When it gets a little bit too stiff, get rid of the whisk and scrape this. Now this goes onto your counter. Use a little bit of bench flour. I use uh, sparingly the bench flour. And use the heel of your hand. Keep one hand a little bit clean for answering your phone. <laughs> and this takes about, I would say, anywhere from five to eight minutes to make a nice smooth dough. So are you now developing the gluten? Definitely developing the gluten in the, in the dough. So this looks nice. It should bounce back. Yep, it's bouncing nicely back. And this goes right into an oiled bowl and covered. Warm spot. Generally in my kitchen, the warm spot is up here on top of the oven. It's not too hot, it's just beautiful. And I think I'll just push this right into my display of copper double boilers. So just a little bit of bench flour before you take your dough out of the bowl. Now notice it's about doubled in bulk. If you rise it too much, the um, donuts will be sort of a little flabby and too airy. Uh, oh, it smells so good. So turn it out. Oh, it's coming nicely because you've oiled the bowl. Very useful to oil the bowl. Have a parchment lined baking sheet, just lightly dusted with flour. And this is where we're gonna put our two and a half inch 
donuts. We're gonna roll the dough till it's about a quarter of an inch thick. You might need just a little bit of flour on your rolling pin. So a quarter of an inch. Now you should be able to get about 20 donuts out of this dough. Look how nice and smooth it is. Oh, such a perfect little jelly donut. And try to be very cautious of uh, getting as many out of the first rolling as you can. And you're going to let them rise covered for approximately 20 minutes. So if you don't have a cutter at home, what do you suggest that? Um... Don't make donuts. <laughs> You have to, you know, as you're going to be a professional, you should get yourself the basic tools for each project. And then you'll always have them. I, I've had this for so many years. And I've built up my battery de cuisine uh, very carefully and thoughtfully over the years so that I have uh, the tools I need. So now cover your cut donuts and just leave in a warm spot for about 20 minutes. And this tray has already risen. Look how beautiful they look. They don't raise a lot, but that little rest is very important. So now these are basically ready to fry. Use a deep fryer if you have one. I tend to use an enamel cast iron pot like this that's deep enough to hold oil that's at least two inches deep, and it has to be uh, preheated to a temperature of 370 degrees. So um, it's heating up, it is now at 320. I'm gonna raise the temperature just a little bit. And now to make the glaze, one cup of confectioner's sugar. I like to strain it to get rid of those little lumpies that mm -hmm. you always find in Tenex sugar. The glaze should be smooth and liquidy, uh, not like a royal icing. Then we're thinning it with three tablespoons of milk to one cup of sugar. For a clearer glaze, if you don't want to use milk, you can flavor it with maple syrup. You can flavor it with honey. You can even use just water. I like the milky glaze. Does it add more richness if you use milk over water? If you use milk? Yeah, it's, it's just a, a nice tender glaze. What percent milk do you use? I always use whole milk for baking and for cappuccinos. <laughs> <laughs> We're just covering the glaze just to make sure that it doesn't get a skin on it. Now I have a little piece of dough left. I'm gonna just drop it into the uh, oil and see what happens. And you wanna use a flavorless oil. Uh, we're using safflower oil today, but you can use other kinds of oils, but flavorless with a very, very high smoking point. Make sure the temperature is exactly right so we have a little donut that's certainly getting a nice color. So then carefully just place your donuts right oh, look what's happening that's popping exactly right so the donut stays half in the oil and half out of the oil and if the temperature is right you will get a nice little light line in the middle of your donut if you put too many donuts in at one time you might bring down the temperature of your oil okay we're done with the frying so those are pretty cute now to fill We'll take these over here. So these are my Japanese chopsticks, wood, and you can make a little hole in the side. And this should be done while the donut is warm, but there's definitely an air space in there for the jelly. So find your hole and fill. <gasps> you can see it. What kind of jam are you using? Homemade raspberry jam that's strained. That's strain? Mm -hmm. We strained. I don't make raspberry jelly, but since these are called jelly donuts, you have to use jelly. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot tell you. My mouth is watering. So now these are ready to glaze. We'll finish those, but we want to show you. We're going to just dip in the glaze and turn upside down. Oh boy, this is a treat. It is fun for the family. It's fun for kids to see donuts rise. It's so much better than the donuts, <laughs> most donuts you buy. And by the way, you have to eat the donuts immediately. <laughs> so I have to show you what they look like inside, don't I? And I think that's only done with a bite. <laughs> oh. Mmm. Word of warning, these are highly addictive. <laughs> Best jelly donut ever. 
Well, if you studied Latin when you were in uh, grammar school or junior high school, you would know that frictura means fritter. And that is really the base word for the fritters that I'm going to show you how to make right now. Apple fritters, they are delicious. There is no rising, there is no rolling, there is no cutting. It's just a nice stirring and dropping into hot oil. And I'm just cutting up, I, we need uh, two apples and these are gala apples. They're very tasty and they hold their shape very nicely when fried. I think Granny Smith's work very well also. Uh, maybe Ida Red's would also work, a dense apple. A uh, quarter inch dice and cord peeled and that's your apple. So they're ready. Now the dough itself is very easy to make. Uh, two cups of all-purpose flour. Just measure all your dry ingredients into a bowl. And we're not using yeast. Um, in this batter we're using a leavening baking powder. So two cups of flour, a quarter of a cup, plus two tablespoons of sugar. And you know, sometimes recipes, you just, we don't want them too sweet, so we have to cut down and make an odd measurement, like two tablespoons. People always say, why? But it's, it's necessary. And uh, two and a quarter teaspoons of baking powder. This can be whisked together. Now the wet ingredients. Two eggs into three quarters of a cup of whole milk. And you can whisk these, or if using a fork, sort of break up the eggs into the milk. A half a teaspoon of vanilla. And two tablespoons of melted butter. So you can see, this is not a complicated nope. business. I love making fritters. Uh, you can incorporate, instead of apples, you could do carrots, grated carrots in this. Oh, sure, grated zucchini would be delicious. But uh, we want, we're making everything on the sweet side for our donut show. And then add your apples. It smells great with that delectable vanilla. When you're using vanilla and any flavoring, it's always the best quality that you can find. Mm -hmm. uh, very important in all of baking, cooking, to find the freshest ingredients, as you, I'm sure, are taught very well yeah. at the CIA, not the Central Intelligence Agency, no. but the Culinary Institute of America. And that's in Hyde Park, right? Yeah. yeah. Right on the Hudson River. Mm -hmm. It's such a beautiful place, and that's where President Roosevelt had his home. Yeah, both prisons. Just up the block. Yes, just up the block. Do you go to visit? Yes, we have gone a few times. And actually, in one of uh, the classes in the bachelor's program, they actually take you to the Vanderbilt mansion oh, as well. That's right up the block as well. And visit the wonderful kitchens. Yes. Yeah. And see how they were able to serve state dinners <laughs> with very little in the way of equipment. So here we have it. And we're going to uh, use an ice cream scoop. This is a half ounce scoop in 350 degree preheated safflower oil. Uh, you can use a rice bran oil uh, also, or a canola oil, uh, depending on your, on your taste. But this goes right into the hot oil. So here you just drop a scoop right in. Because of this hot enamel cast iron pot, it really does maintain the temperature very nicely. And also, like in all of baking, even though this is frying, <laughs> but it's a dough. If your ingredients are at room temperature, it really will uh, help maintain the temperature of the oil. Oh, these are looking so good. I do a lot of uh, big breakfast at my house in Maine. We usually have a house full of people, 18 or so at the breakfast table, and uh, making things like fritters or waffles or pancakes, it's uh, an easy way to serve a crowd, and they are delighted. Oh, you know what else you could, of course, make corn fritters, same batter, yeah. and have corn right off the cob, nice sweet corn, <sighs> and serve that with powdered sugar. Wouldn't that be good? Yeah. yeah. You want them golden brown, not too pale in color. And I have a rack with a paper towel underneath it to catch any drips of oil. Very cute. That looks amazing. Get the darkest ones out first. 
And again, these are to be served warm, not too hot. You don't want to burn yourself. I'll make another little batch. Now this batter should make about three dozen of the apple fritters. And the temperature of the oil is maintaining at 350, which is excellent. Now, have you ever been to a donut factory? Yeah. No. Yes. Yeah, they're so much fun to visit because everything's so automated and they're making thousands and thousands of donuts at the same time. Okay, the last little batch and we are done with our fritters. And while these are cooking, I can maybe uh, show you the powdered sugar. And by the way, this is making pretty much 36 fritters. So after three to four minutes, look what you have. A really pretty oh, wow. fritter. And while it's warm, you're going to sprinkle the sugar because it'll stick. There. Beautiful. I think that's a wonderful way to start the day with the apple fritter. Here, so you, you guys try that. I'm going to rescue the remaining fritters. What do you, tell me what you think. They're so light. They're really good. On a recent trip to New Orleans, I was treated to a very early morning breakfast at a cafe, Café du Monde, where the specialty is café au lait with chicory and a delicious beignet. And I was inspired to teach you at home how to make beignet. Now, students, have you had beignet yet? We learned, we learned a chocolate bread. variation. Yeah, I thought chocolates, yeah, and I've never made chocolate. And it has a candy in the middle. It has a little bit of like a chocolate truffle in the middle, so it's like a molten beignet. Oh, wow. How delicious. Well, this is the plainest, most delicious sugary beignet you've ever tasted, and uh, it's very easy to make. Start with your yeast, three quarters of a cup of warm water, no more than 115 degrees, remember that, and one package of active dry yeast. What we want to do is proof this a little bit and a quarter cup of granulated sugar. Leave that for a couple of minutes just to get the yeast growing a little bit. And it will get nice and fluffy and foamy. Uh, in another bowl, three and a half cups of flour, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, and a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. And when you're grating something on a great grater like this, pay attention to your fingertips. There's no ingredient called fingertip. <laughs> so that's all good. And so this gets just whisked together. And the yeast is proofed. I can see a few little bubbles. Add your two tablespoons of butter. Room temperature. The recipe is very, very similar to the jelly donut. One large egg. I'm going to mix that briefly in the milk. So we have a half a cup of whole milk. So one and a half cups of flour into this initial. Then you add one and three quarters cups flour more and save a half a cup of flour for actually kneading on the, mm -hmm. on the bench. I'll just add the last little bit. So the dough is nicely mixed. It's coming away from the sides of the bowl. Now these beignets were developed in France as a um, treat for pre-Mardi Gras. After Mardi Gras, you're not allowed, that's Lent, you're not allowed to really eat beignet, not the sugary ones anyway. And beignet is the French word for donut. Oh. Mm. Sticky, sticky, and sprinkle this extra flour. So there, now it's nice and smooth. We'll put that right into a oiled bowl and let it rise in a warm place until it's doubled in bulk. So now the dough has risen. Look how nice it is. Oh, see, and if you press it, it deflates. It's so light, it's so fluffy. Just put this out on the counter. It should not really stick too much, but you might need a little bit of bench flour. 
You want to roll this into a 12 inch square. I'm going to just. So you want to make 16 three inch squares. So you cut this into 16 squares and using a pizza wheel really makes it very easy. So four. See how you divide it in half? Mm -hmm. And put eight on a tray. So there's eight. And these now have to rest and rise a little while longer. Again, basically what you're trying to do is relax the dough. Mm -hmm. And your oil, 350 degrees. And again, use that nice unflavored high smoking point oil. These have to stay for 30 minutes uh, to relax and to rise just a little bit. So now very gently, right next to the surface, drop your fluffy, fluffy beignet right into the 350 degree oil. And I would say do two or three at a time. Now see the color these are getting? Oh, exactly right. So that looks like a well-cooked beignet. Don't you think, guys? Wow. Yeah. Pretty impressive, right? <laughs> and while they're still warm, we're going to dunk them into sifted confectioner's sugar. And you see the spider is good with the large holes in it. The oil drips right through. This is no time to walk away to do anything yeah. else. <laughs> you have to pay attention when you're frying. It's donut time. And don't get your hands anywhere near the oil. So now while these are hot, roll them in the sugar. Oh. Generous amounts. In New Orleans, they serve them to you just coated, covered with piles of sugar. Kind of mm -hmm. fun. So donuts are good pretty much any time of day. Beignets are best though, I think, with cafe au lait. A jelly donuts anytime and apple fritters well best for breakfast or brunch with maple syrup and powdered sugar you have certainly been very good students sitting here asking great questions we'll see you on martha bakes next time begin with a cooled cake that may or may not be crumb coated on a wire rack Set your cake rack over a rimmed baking sheet. Pour glaze over your cake, letting it run over the sides. Tap on your work surface to encourage the glaze to run over the edges. You may need to spread gently with an offset spatula or a table knife to cover the cake completely. Let it set before serving.